My name's Rusty Sutton. I'm the redneck boat guy. I build two-cylinder racing outboard boats. I build the props to go on them, and we also sail a 33-foot catamaran named See Y'all Later. Hope you enjoy the channel. Well, I decided to add, add some of these doublers on the edge of the uh, bulkheads. And they're very, very thin. It's a small stick, probably half inch by half inch. It's hollowed out so it'll fit over that plywood right there. You know, it, it's got a slot in it. And I thickened West System and put it in there. What that'll do for me, the uh, skin, when it comes, normally it just rests against the edge of the bulkhead. But I think I want to tie it to it here. I've done it on the inside, and uh, mainly that was for structural flex side to side. That's rounded off. But this one will actually get the skin put against it. You can see on this side, where, you know, I don't need it, the flex in here. That's actually extra. I probably don't even need that inside, but I put it anyway. But over here, see, it doesn't contact the wall. It just backs it up. The bulkhead backs it up if it does push that far. So, I don't know. Uh, I know it'll help. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I know it's going to add weight, but uh, that's all right. Uh, I think... It may actually help me as far as weight goes, not have to make that side so friggin' strong because it does have a nice contact point right here. Uh, we'll see. I, I think it's going to help me. I, I like what I'm, what I'm doing there. Well, this morning I've got several things going on. I've uh, been sanding on the frame, trying to get it fared up, uh, getting it like I want it, filling in little holes with... Uh, with uh, thickened West system about the consistency of peanut butter. But I'm liking my second non-trip here. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty unique. It's not, uh, not a common shape that I've seen in the past, but I'm liking how it's looking. Uh, I think it's going to give me a, it's going to shear off the high waves and stop them and go down this way rather than just building up and causing a burble and causing it to hop in here. I want that boat to come in smooth and stay smooth. So this is gonna peel some of that high off of there and it'll do it, uh, shoot, all the way to here. Now it's still gonna be looking, you know, you'll still have a little bit of an edge there, but it won't be very much. It's just a fine entry. And when it gets here, it's gonna be probably at its thickest, probably a half inch. And then back here, this lap strike will only be like three eighths. But uh, you don't want a big, heavy grab out there, but I do want to be able to peel water off. And I don't know if you can notice it. I'll hold the camera straight here. This thing is not straight up. It's actually canted out just a little bit. So it'll peel that water off and create a little bit of a vortice in here. I don't know, just ideas. I think it works. It'll be cool. I might be able to put this piece on today. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, get this outside put on there. And I'm going to do it first because what it'll do is it'll run along here and uh, it'll butt up to right here. The plywood will come into right here and it'll finish off the height. See this height right here. I want the plywood to be able to sand in so that when I put the big piece on all the way over, I can come right over that and use this edge like I want to blend back in here. I'll probably actually continue this line straight out with the edge of that plywood, but I'll have it there to sand down to make that shape. So that's the goal. All right, I got my plywood roughed out. I say roughed out on the outside. On the inside, it's cut to fit, man. I got them fitting pretty nice in there. So I got this one fitting in the slot and this one fitting right up against the, uh, the outer trip, the outer chine, really. So got my stuff cut out. Uh, pretty excited about that. I think uh, what I'll do when I start, I've got to glue this one in first. Uh, the reason I say that is to get the, uh, I got to take this off. That can't be on there because under here, I'm going to need to scribe that line and sand that flat to this chine right here, to this lap strike. So I can't do that with this piece on. So this one's got to go on second. Anyway, that's my goal is to uh, get these pieces put on now. And I think what I'll do is I'll take the boat off of the, off of the here and turn it sideways. 
and leave it sitting just like that. So I, so that glue will run in this, in this little trap right here in this slot and stay down in there. Otherwise it's going to keep running out and running out and running out. So I'm going to stand that boat up, um, sand these down real good. I say that just get me my little DA sander, make fresh wood out of it and then, uh, get it ready to apply. And, uh, heck, I think I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. Got to decide if I'm going to clamp it down or go ahead and hit it with a couple of staples. Uh, probably just clamp it down. It's e it's so easy and easy to undo. But heck, man, when it's glued in there, it it's home. So uh, yeah, I'll probably hit it with a couple of staples. So yeah, let's put some plywood down. Well, I got the toothpick laid on its side, ready to put the first non-trip on. Let's look and see. I've got it prepped. I've got the uh, little channel all cleaned out and ready. I've got some blue tape on it so that it won't run over on the inside. I'll, I can see it on the outside if it's gonna run over, but on the inside I couldn't, so I taped that off. Got it ready for install. Got blue tape on the inside of there. And uh, what's cool is, you can see the end of the uh, rib right there. And so I've got all that rounded and filleted so that anything that runs over there will also bond to that and it'll come right on through here and uh, make up in the slot i've test fitted a bunch of times so uh yeah fixing to uh put the first piece of plywood on it all right i'm gonna wipe it down Got a little acetone on the rag we don't want to do much. I don't want to really wet it, but uh, I do want to get the contaminants off of it best I can. Let that soak in a little bit. And then just give it a quick light wipe. I mean, I, I'm this is none of this is gonna be exposed. It's all gonna be just either wet system or uh, or uh, fiberglass over it. So I'm not worried about a wood finish if you were worried about a wood finish you'd, you'd do a lot more prep and a lot more cleaning than what i'm doing but i'm just kind of getting the heavies off of it right now you know another thing when you're <clears throat> when you're wanting to make a nice finished boat that's a wood grain man you got to be real careful where you grip or drop a piece of wet system or uh, fiberglass or anything on that wood when i was building boats with jimmy campisi uh you know we were doing it for production then, you know, you wanted a pretty boat. So you were uh, you were always being careful with that big wide flat wood because we always delivered it in the wood, you know, let whoever paint whatever they want to do. All right, so we got it cleaned. I need to mix me up some goop and I guess put it in there and you know, I'm gonna get my staple gun ready before I do that. Uh, I normally keep my pressure on this down up to 100 pounds, but uh, at 100 pounds, it'll drive a staple plumb through that little over three millimeter. So one of the things I'm gonna have to do is check my air pressure on that first hit to make sure it's bearing staples below flush, but not busting all the way through the wood. In fact, you know what? Let's do a little sample. I got some of that same wood right here. This is a cypress and this is the uh, Okumi, three millimeter Okumi. Let's do a little test here and see if I've got my, see if I've got my uh, air pressure right. And it, it put it flush. Can you see that? It put it right at flush. I don't know if that needs to be a little more Actually, it's a little below flush, but you know what? I'm gonna crank it up just a little bit and try it again. All right, I got it set at 95 pounds. Let's we'll see what that does. What that got sticky on my. Yeah, last time I was working, I was messing in the west system, so I must have got a little on there. Yeah, that one didn't bury much. Yeah, that one did. That and buried a little bit more, and I like that. I like the fact that it's uh, 
got enough dimple in there where you can fill it in with putty. Either one of them have been fine, but you can definitely see an edge that that one's deeper. You know, I think I'm gonna go back it off just a little bit. That one's pretty deep. I'm gonna put it on like 93 pounds, 92. Okay, now we got our gun set. I'll make one more hit just to see. Yeah, it doesn't need to be any heavier than that at all. Okay, good deal. Put that back in the scrap pile over there. All right, so what we're gonna do here, uh, I need to mix up some glue, get ready to put it in there. And I've got a few little clamps around in case I need to clamp, but I'm probably just, I'll clamp one end, clamp the other end, make sure it's in there good, and then I'll probably staple it out. These clamps over here. Get them ready. Let's see, I got another couple of small ones here. Just in case I need them. Alright, so got my wood. Let's uh, mix up some West system. I don't know if I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna drip straight West system in there first and then go in there with some with the filler so that it's got solid west in the bottom of it and it'll soak into that wood good and then come back in there with that filler. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a pretty good bit of west system on that. <clears throat> and something I've been doing, you know, <laughs> mainly because I'm cheap and I run out of brushes and I didn't go buy me another, any more brushes. I need to do that. I've been spreading it with my finger. Now on these big wide surfaces, that's not gonna work. So I might as well get me up. Go ahead and use one of my last brushes that I got. But just on this framework, I've been sticking my finger in a, you know, I ha had a glove on. Stick my finger in and just wipe it. Something I just did that I think is going to help me is I went along and made little tick marks. Right, right on the outside of my nailer back there. Rib right there that I'm gonna, going to uh, need to hit. And you know, I'm not so worried about this surface because it's going to get Kevlar over the outside of it anyway. So yeah, I got tick marks built all along here and here's another, there's another uh, rib right there. I'm going to go out and my, and my last rib's right here. So I got tick marks on that. And what this will do is it'll just, you can see it's scarfed on up from nothing to this. So what this will do is I'll just put that down there and glue it down. And then I'll scarf this outside back to thickness and it'll be kind of a reverse scarf. I knew I could do that with a three mil instead of trying to get a scarf on this inside and making it work. I just let it bow up and shave it off on the outside to shape. So, okay, got that done. I got my staple gun set and ready. Uh, all right, I got two squirts of West System uh, in my little uh, six ounce paper cup there. Getting it stirred up real good. I think the first thing I'll do is to drip it down in that slot and get that slot good and wet. The main thing about uh, epoxy, if you don't know, is to really stir it well. Uh, that's one of the tricks. If you uh, if you have trouble with epoxy going off, uh, sometimes it just you, you got to stir it more than you think you need to. That's kind of the deal. Um, you'd think, okay, that's enough. We'll keep going about twice that long and then your epoxy will go off every time. And of course, you know that the longer it sets all next to each other, it's, it builds thermal heat, right? So what you have to do is you have to be careful about, uh, leaving it in a pot too long. Cause man, it'll, uh, it'll go off on you. <laughs> so I'm going to set that piece right there. So I won't lose it. And then... I'm gonna try to get some of this in the slot here and I'm not gonna be short with it. I'm gonna put it in there, buddy. I want it to squeeze out. That's why I made two, uh, two pumps and it looks like that's not even gonna be enough because I want it to squeeze out. I want it to be solid in there. That's why I put a little, oh now. That's why I put it up on the edge like that so I can uh, drip it in that slot and it will stay there. I think we talked about that as well. Yeah, it's going to take way more than this. Yeah, 
Yep, yep, yep. It's going to take a lot. All right. They sell that stuff by the gallons. Pop some bubbles. That'll uh, go in there, and I'm sure it'll it'll uh, soak in real good. Soak into that wood, and that's what I want. I want it to soak in everywhere. I'll come back around and pop the bubbles. If it gets any, and it will, because that's deep, deep right there. I'm going to mix two more. Mix up two more squirts, though. Let's see here. One. The resin. And I'm using uh, fast hardener. I've got some slow hardener. But I'm reserving that for when I go to using big, uh, when I try to do multiple layups of carbon fiber or Kevlar. And uh, I want a lot of work time. So I did buy a little bit small uh, can, I guess it's a pint, of the uh, extra slow hardener so that I could uh, work big pieces. So here we, got to, here we go again doing our uh, over stirring. This may not be enough. Oh, it probably will be. I don't know, it might not be. I'm just now halfway down the slot. Make sure I get plenty good and stirred up. But, <laughs> as I just said, that's fast hardener, so I need to get rolling. I'll wet out the uh, board too, so it'll have good contact. The plywood. Yeah, this is going to start running downhill this way. All right. All right, that's probably for, as far as I need to go with it. Back through there, popping bubbles. All right, that's looking pretty good. Better put some more up here because it's gonna, like I say, it's gonna run downhill as fast as I can put it in there. It's wanting to run downhill. All right, so it's gonna squeeze out a lot. I could can use a little more right in there. Okay, so it's gonna go in there like that. So I need to wet this side out on that back corner and where the. Uh, Everywhere that there's a uh, cross member, something to something to nail to. So yeah, I'm gonna have to have some more of this, but that's all right. I got plenty. We'll get this laid out so it won't go off before I get everything on there. Yep, yeah, I might as well squeeze me some other. Make me another bait. Uh, now the rush is on, buddy. But I got it out of the cup, so that'll be good. That'll help. Make one more cup there. One more. Not a whole cup, just a one more uh, pump. Yeah, man, that's coming out of there a bunch. I, uh, Probably gonna have to keep running it back uphill here or it'll leak out. That's kind of unfortunate. All right, stir up, get it going, boy. Gotta make it happen, Captain. Yeah, I gotta wet that frame out too. I hadn't thought about that recently, so I'll definitely need more than what I got in this cup right here.
All right, I'm gonna call that good. All right, instead of doing that here, I'm gonna do it over here. Okay. Got it a little better and I'll have room to wet this frame out. Let me get that wet out good. Dripping on the bottom. <laughs> Man, I'm definitely a dead gun redneck. <laughs> I got wet system flowing everywhere. I'll have to, have it get it off of there before the before it dries. Cause that that was a, a well uh, finished bottom <laughs> before I put wet system all over. But even my doctor's got to practice, right? <laughs> got plenty to do. All right, this looks like it's going to work. Keep running this back uphill here for a minute. holding pretty good up in here. That's going to be a nice squeeze out too. Oh yeah, buddy. Okay. So now I need to come along this backside. Yeah, I'm probably going to need another pump. All right. So I in through here. Wet that out good. Yep. I'm going to need another, another squirt. Maybe not a whole squirt. Yeah, probably settle here. Better do a whole squirt. So I got the boat part of it wetted out pretty good and got, got it running everywhere. So I guess that's the right thing to do, right? Just put it to where it runs out everywhere. Get this last one mixed up. All right, got it wedged out. Okay. I think I got it in position. So what I'll do now is come back and get a piece of paper tape. I'm gonna get hands on my tools. I don't want to get them all yucky. So let's, let's put it to the boat, we think. So that stuck down good. And I'll just come along here. Now these will probably sand out, but along here and make that to the frame. I like it. Alright, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do the top hole again. While we're on the road. Okay, I'm gonna skip over to that inside trip. Get it right up there, which is underneath my scrap line. Don't want to have your finger behind it. <laughs> if that staple misses and goes through there, you would know it immediately. Oh, it's exciting getting that non-trip on there. 
Not that the boat will float yet, but man, it's getting closer to that point. See if I can feel in there and see if I'm getting good. Yep, going right through the middle of it. Here we go. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> well, riddle me this, boat builders. Is anybody that's messed with West System? How many times do you clean your hands up, right? Final cleanup, thinking, okay, I'm done, and then you go back. This is, I think it's my fourth time to clean my hands, uh, and I see something else I need to wipe or rub or push around, and I get back in it. So anyway, uh, about done as far as, well, I am done. Got it all stapled in, got it all pried out like it wants to be. Uh, we'll let that one wait. Boy, it's a monumental moment uh, <laughs> to get this on there and get everything uh Nailed in. Let's look around here. I'll... Do a little looking around here. Got it. Uh, made it up pretty nicely to the outside. And you'll see here where that second trip's going to start. It stays up on the top trip, but it blends right out to it. That blends out pretty good. But what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll cut that edge, right? Uh, cut that wood off. Cut the plywood off right at that edge. And that'll be the edge of that second trip. Second trip's not very big. Uh, its primary purpose is to, uh, like I say, shear water off. And uh, here you can see those wedges that I got stuck in there to hold that down to the bottom. Uh, because I've got, when I work that, that uh, line in there, look here, all these drips. When I work that, um, <laughs> I'll, be back, I'll be back cleaning my hand again. When I fine tune that groove in the bottom, uh, I want to just be right against it, you know, I want to be all the way down here because that gives me the shape that I want on the outside. So that's what we did. And I see drips everywhere, so I'll be getting all back in this. But that's the way it works, isn't it? Okay, I got one non-trip on there, monumental challenge, man, to get the shape right and to, uh, man, that's going to be cool. <laughs> That's going to do it for me, I do believe.